To an inexperienced builder, the case may appear as simply a housing unit, the sole purpose of which is to hold the other pieces of hardware without any other aspect to it worth noting, except perhaps that it can also look kind of cool sometimes. Now you may be thinking that this is an overly caricatured portrayal of a novice builder's perception of computer cases, and you'd be absolutely right. But unfortunately, it's also a state of mind to which even some more experienced builders are more than willing to default back to if they're pinching for pennies. However, the case can add so much more to your gaming experience than you might realize. And more importantly, it can take away from the experience as well. So you need to pay attention to what each case has to offer. That's why in this video, we'll be going over all of the factors you need to keep in mind when choosing a case for your PC, gaming or otherwise. So without any further ado, let's begin. We'll start with the most obvious factor, the size. All PC cases are unique in one way or another, but they are generally based on one of the following four molds. Small form factor, mini tower, mid tower, and full tower. Naturally, the size of the case will decide which hardware pieces can and cannot fit into the set case, but it is important to point out that these four form factors are all built around only a single piece of hardware, the motherboard. Small form factor cases can only accommodate mini ITX motherboards. Mini towers have enough room to fit a micro ATX motherboard. Mid towers are made for ATX motherboards. And full towers are needed if you've got your eyes set on that EATX motherboard. Now each of these form factors can also be used to install a smaller motherboard, meaning that you can use a motherboard of any size in a full tower, anything except an EATX motherboard in a mid tower, and so on. The compatibility can sometimes go in the opposite direction as well. For example, there are certain mid towers that can fit even an EATX motherboard, but these are the exception and not the rule. Aside from which motherboard they support, these terms like mini tower, mid tower, and so on hold no guarantee of being able to support a certain graphics card or a cooler. So always double check to see that the case you're buying is indeed large enough for your graphics card and CPU cooler to fit. The most important factor to check for when it comes to graphics cards is the length. But the height is also becoming more crucial than ever due to the popularity of bulky gaming graphics cards with massive fans. As for CPU coolers, the most important measurement to take is the height, since large tower coolers may not fit inside a compact case. And if you're looking to install a liquid cooling solution, you'll need to make sure that the case has adequate radiator support. Components like RAM, SSDs, HDDs, and optical drives generally aren't affected by the size of the case, except that smaller cases will be able to carry fewer of each. Pay extra attention to the spec sheet if you're looking to buy a case that has support for an optical drive, as you will need it to have a five and a quarter inch drive bay a component that is slowly but surely being phased out of modern gaming cases. If you've already bought a computer case only to discover it doesn't contain an optical drive bay, don't beat yourself up over it. There are many excellent external optical drives that connect to your PC via USB and that won't set you back more than $25. Finally, consider the power supply you will be using. Most PC cases use the standard ATX power supplies, but many small form factor cases can only fit the more compact SFX power supplies. Other PSU formats do exist, but these are the only two you need to know about if you're building a desktop PC. With all of that said, we generally recommend mid towers to users who don't require a compact or a portable case. They offer plenty of space, which not only makes it easier to fit all of the components properly, but also allows for easier cleaning and better airflow. Full towers are generally more expensive, so it's best to buy them only if you're planning on making good use of the extra space. And while mini towers and small form factor cases offer unparalleled degrees of portability, they come with some distinct disadvantages, such as being more difficult to manage, not having enough room to fit all of the components, and generally running louder because of the stifling airflow. So if you don't plan on lugging your case around with you, do yourself a favor and get a mid tower. Now we come to an aspect of modern gaming cases many of you aren't even aware of, 
and that's modularity. Granted, it's not for everyone, but being able to add and remove parts such as trays, covers, mounts, and so on will inject a large dose of flexibility and customizability to an otherwise unchanging PC component. Excessive modularity is generally seen as an overkill, but we still recommend you check out what the market has to offer before committing yourself to the constricting designs of non-modular cases. Not all of them resemble abstract pieces of modern art. In fact, many offer a tasteful design that you wouldn't really guess is modular at all. Also, did you know that controls on the front of the case need not be limited to just the standard couple of USB ports plus the headphone and microphone jacks? Some cases feature an entire arsenal of cool features in addition to these bare essentials, like heat monitor and LCD panels, fans controllers, volume controls, clocks, lighting controllers, and so much more. And if you're building a high-end PC with loads of fans that will all be running at the same time, consider buying a soundproof case. The whirring of fans may be easy to ignore at first, but it can quickly turn into an unwanted distraction. None of these features, modular or otherwise, are necessary for a case to do its job well. And indeed, the large majority of PC users will be more than content with their non-modular case that only has the standard few ports on the front. But we wanted to make this section to illustrate just a few ways in which cases can be made to accomplish so much more than simply hold the hardware pieces like an old box. And speaking of boxes, it is crucial that your case offers better airflow than the standard shipping piece of cardboard does. We say this because there are some cases that don't manage to accomplish this much and can easily double as baking ovens when the system is under heavy load. Generally speaking, modern cases tend to adopt designs that facilitate proper ventilation, but many can still benefit from the additional kick that a case-mounted fan or two can provide. In fact, we recommend installing at least one or ideally two case-mounted fans even in cases with excellent ventilation, as this is the best way to increase the overall airflow. A PC with great airflow will run more quietly, dissipate heat more efficiently, and it may even draw a bit less power. How many fan mounts the case supports will depend on the size of the case, as will the size of these mounts. Smaller cases mostly stick to a few 120mm and 240mm mounts, but larger ones will not only support more mounts, but sometimes even bigger ones. The same pretty much goes for liquid cooling support, only instead of fans we have radiators. Larger cases will have the room necessary to support more and larger radiator mounts, which will allow for a more expansive liquid cooling setup. As we've said, manufacturers have gotten pretty good at designing cases with good airflow, but you can still find a lot of older models being sold, models that were made before such a large emphasis was being placed on essential property. And while these models will generally be exceedingly affordable, they will invariably end up doing more harm than good. So make sure to do proper research before deciding on which PC case is the right for you, instead of just letting the prices dictate your decision. Like it or not, PC building has evolved from a strictly practical matter to one that concerns itself just as much with aesthetics. Now, more than ever, we are presented with an obscene amount of transparent cases that prominently feature glass in their build. Of course, tastes differ, so there's still a fair bit of variety here, so there's no need to worry if this isn't your cup of tea. Glass, of course, goes well with RGB lighting, but there will always be cases with clean and unassuming black exteriors for those who prefer a more inconspicuous approach, as well as cases with aggressive, angular designs that have become synonymous with the term gaming. And since taste varies so much, we don't feel that we have anything to add to this, except perhaps to shed some light on how the aesthetics of the exterior can affect airflow. For example, you may think that all simple cases have excellent airflow, but some actually sacrifice airflow for the sake of their nondescript aesthetic. One such case would be the Thermaltake Versa H17. Now, the Thermaltake H17 is still a perfectly functional case. We aren't dissing on it here. If you're looking for a good budget case that performs quite admirably, it's definitely a strong contender. But generally speaking, cases with a meshed front are way better for performance-oriented buyers. So this may be a reason to opt for another case if you're looking to min-max your performance, like a D&D player who rolls for stats at home. As you can see, even something as unassuming as the design of the front panel can have an effect on the overall performance of the case. So you should think about the aesthetics of the case, even if you don't really care about how it looks. 
All of the features we've talked about so far will have a role to play when determining the overall price. Now this may lead you to believe that you can get a pretty decent case no matter the price, so long as it's non-modular and lacks any additional features like the ones we've mentioned, both practical and aesthetic. But the problem with many cheap cases is that they simply suffer from poor build quality more than anything else. This can manifest in the form of poorly designed infrastructure for cable management, insufficient rigidity in the chassis, sharp edges, lack of thumb screws, and so much more. And of course, we mustn't forget the airflow that's more likely than not going to be very poor. So even if you don't care about aesthetics or extra features, you'd be doing yourself a disservice by picking up a $25 case. In fact, performance-oriented gamers might have it harder since the cases that have amazing exteriors and extra features more often than not tend to be more expensive cases that have at least a serviceable, if not excellent build quality. But distinguishing a good inconspicuous case among the sea of rubbish can be much more challenging. Luckily, there's one aspect of the case that can often be used as a good estimate of quality, the price. Now, buying a computer case isn't an exact science, but we found the cases around the $60 range generally strike the best balance between affordability and quality. Conversely, anything that's cheaper than $40 without discounts is most likely not going to do your PC any good. And if you simply can't afford to fit a $50 or $60 case into your budget, then it's time to go discount hunting. There is no shortage of computer case manufacturers releasing new models to us year after year. And with such a competitive market, the consumer is always treated to good models at decent discounts. And that about does it for this video. We did all we could and the rest is up to you. But hopefully this video should make the rest a breeze. A breeze as breezy as the airflow inside your case will be. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so we can keep making more videos like this one. And if you've got friends who could benefit from watching this, help them out by sharing this video. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click on the bell icon so that you'll receive a notification every time a new video gets uploaded. We upload videos regularly, so stay tuned. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, if you're itching to see more case-related stuff, check out the link in the description that'll take you to a video where we list out some of the best computer cases currently available across all form factors and budgets. Honestly, you're gonna love it. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.